Hey everyone, it's Mia and today's video is going to be all about New Year's resolutions. I know some people don't love the idea of New Year's resolutions because you could just do it at any point in the year but I think it's such a great opportunity to just like change your life because I mean I don't think there is a lot of people that actually set goals and targets for themselves like every few months or anything like that so you might as well do it now. So I've come up with three like categories of New Year's resolutions and then like specific targets and some of these are my resolutions and some of them I've had in previous years and have like just completed or just made it part of my life and now it's like a normal thing that I don't even think about um, or just some other ideas that I'm not doing but like could be beneficial to other people. So if you like this video make sure to give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel down below and let's just get started. So I'm going to put the timestamps of the different like categories down in the description in case you only want to hear about one sort of type of resolution. So yeah. So I'm going to start off with environmental goals. Um, so I feel like everyone should have a resolution that's related to the environment because I think it used to be something that oh there's people that care about the environment and people that not so much but now it's like kind of a crisis and everyone needs to care about the environment. So the first resolution is to never buy plastic bags or plastic bottles. I came up with these two things because I think they're the two um, single use plastics that are the most easy to cut out completely from your life. Put bags in all of your pockets, bags in your wallet, like anything like that, just fold it up really small and make sure you always have them with you. Cause it's 2020 now, we can't afford to be buying single use plastic bags, so bad. I can honestly say that I've done this for a long time without even thinking about it, just cause I, I don't wanna buy a bag as well. And every time I go to the supermarket or shopping, anything like that, I always make sure I have tote bags with me. And the other thing is plastic water bottles, Again, they're just not necessary to buy. Make sure you bring a reusable water bottle everywhere with you. And this will also encourage you to drink more water. So if you wanted that as one of your goals as well, then it will probably help with this. The one I'm using at the moment, my dad bought me for Christmas and I love this one. And it's actually um, a metal bottle that can keep things hot or cold. So I could put a hot drink in here and it would keep it hot for a while. This is the brand, I'm not sure where it's from, but yeah. Um, Thoroughly enjoy. Thoroughly. Oh, love the nails against this. I just got my nails done for New Year's. Um, not for New Year's Eve, but for the New Year. I just got them done a few days ago, but obsessed. Next one is to buy loose vegetables and like anything loose that like you can, not wrapped in plastic from the supermarket. So I guess this kind of only applies to you if you do your own food shop or if you like go with your parents to do the food shop, you could encourage them to buy loose fruit and veg um but because i'm at uni i do my own food shop and i do usually buy everything loose and it's also good to limit food waste this way because you're only buying the exact amount that you need for a certain recipe or to eat for the week because it is unlikely that when it's packaged in plastic, that's gonna be like the exact amount that you want. I think food packaging is the hardest single use plastic to get away from, but um, in terms of fruit and veg, a lot of supermarkets offer most of their fruit and veg without plastic. I shop at Sainsbury's just cause of like location and everything, it's just the easiest. Um, in relation to where my uni is. I think the best ones are Sainsbury's and Morrison's for loose fruit and veg. The next one is to eat less animal products and as well as helping the environment this can be one to like be more ethical or improve your health a little bit. It obviously depends how you do it but this comes with so many benefits um, so you could do something like meatless Mondays. If you type in hashtag meatless Monday on Instagram it'll come up with so many like recipes, information about it, how it helps the environment in terms of like how much water it saves, how much land it saves, how much energy it saves and all of that by not eating meat. Animal agriculture is such a big strain on the environment in terms of like the amount of land it uses up, especially red meat is the worst one. So yeah, you could do meatless Mondays or if that's quite easy for you, you could do a few days without meat. You could do only weekends eating meat and the weekdays you eat vegetarian, something like that. And I always want to promote that you don't have to be fully vegetarian or vegan to make a difference with things like this. Like, it's better to do something than nothing. So yeah, just whatever works for you, try and swap out some meals that you'd usually put meat in, try and swap it out for like vegetables or a meat substitute 
or like beans, lentils, anything like that. And also I would say dairy is an easy one to swap out because there are so many plant-based milks. Like I, I bet there's over 10 plant-based milks. So I'm sure you'd find one you like. Um, my favorite is oat milk. So yeah, that's another great way to help the environment is switching your main milk to a plant-based one. And the last environmental resolution I have is one of my New Year's resolutions and it is to buy less fast fashion or if you don't buy a lot of clothes already you could cut out fast fashion completely one thing i'm doing to help with this is i've got an app called good on you and you can type in any brand of clothing and it will come up with all its um, environmental and ethical ratings in terms of like loads of different factors i can't remember all of them but it basically tells you the impact of buying from that company and whether that's a sustainable company to buy from so i'm looking on there at the moment for um, like alternatives to the places I buy at the moment because if I'm honest I do buy a lot of fast fashion which I shouldn't do. To be honest the only sustainable brand I've heard of and I like, know a lot about is Tala which is a brand by Grace Beverly. She's a YouTuber and Instagrammer slash she has three businesses but I've watched her for years and I love her so I would highly recommend checking out her videos but she has her own clothing brand called Tala and it's all sustainable and a lot of the clothes are made from recycled plastic bottles with recyclable packaging and all of this stuff and it's actually really nice clothing it's mainly fitness stuff and a bit of loungewear but next time I need any fitness clothes, I'm definitely going to that brand because it's so nice. If you've got any suggestions of like nice sustainable brands to buy from, please put them in the, in the description because I'm looking for that sort of thing. And another way to do this is to shop secondhand. So on places like Depop and in charity shops. I have shopped in charity shops a bit. I've only bought one thing from there, I think, and it was a coat and it was only $8.99 and it was one of the best things I've bought. I wore it so many times throughout sixth form. So it is sort of hard to find things in charity shops, especially if you're very picky about clothes like I am. It's definitely worth looking because you could find something that could be like a staple in your wardrobe for a long time. So next category is health goals. I know it's so classic to say like you're going to be healthy in the new year and all of that, but I've come up with some more specific goals um, to do with health because I feel like that's the main reason that New Year's resolutions fail is they're not specific enough. So the first one is actually my main New Year's resolution this year and it's to cut down on refined sugars. So I never want to promote like a restrictive diet or anything like that in terms of like you can't have sugar, you can't have this, but um, the amount of refined sugars I eat is like really bad. I eat really healthy meals but it's just snacking and just like treats and stuff. I just have them far too much and it doesn't really feel like treats anymore. It just feels like normal food every day. So that is going to be one of my goals is to really cut down on the amount of refined sugar I eat. So like less chocolate and things like that. Mainly chocolate. That's the main thing that I have. <laughs> so for example if you would say that refined sugars is in a couple of your meals maybe, if it's in your snacks, you could limit yourself to one thing a day with refined sugar in um, and if you don't eat a lot already you could say only eat like five things a week or four things a week, something like that so that you're not having it every single day. I think my one is going to be the five things a week because I don't want to cut it out completely. I just think it's not going to work or like be realistic for me to cut out cut it out completely just because I've eaten it every single day for as many years as I can remember. And the reason I like this one as well is because when you're not eating those snacks with refined sugar or something like that, you'll be replacing it with healthier things so you're getting even more nutrients into your diet. That is my measure of health is the amount of nutrients you're getting. I never count calories or like anything like that. My only measure is getting all the right nutrients. Another resolution could be to eat more fruit and vegetables. So specifically you could say you're having a portion of fruit every single breakfast time or something like you have to have three vegetables with every meal. So I would say I eat like enough vegetables already but you can always have more. I think one of the things that I'm going to do is whenever I cook like a main dish, for example like lentil bolognese, bean chili, sweet potato chickpea tagine, something like that. I always just have that and then like a carb on the side and I think I should add like another vegetable. Even though there's vegetables in the mix, 
I think it's always good to add something else on the side because I actually love vegetables. It's not like it's a struggle for me to be like eating greens, you know. Another great way is to put spinach in smoothies because you can hardly taste it, especially if you wash the spinach and then put it in the smoothies. Um, you can hardly taste it and you can't like see it or anything. So if you're not a fan of vegetables, that's a great way to get them in. And if you're not really sure about plant-based cooking or how to include it into your diet, especially if you're if you don't really like eating whole vegetables, you can look on the internet for loads of inspiration and hashtags on Instagram. I think it's easy to forget how much information is out there on the internet. You just have to look for it and like anything you need is on the internet. I get loads of recipe and meal ideas on Instagram because I follow a lot of vegan food accounts and things like that. So yeah, definitely have a browse on there and save all the recipes that you're interested in. And the last health resolution is probably one of the most important, I would say, and it is to find out what vitamins and minerals you might be lacking in. So I feel like everyone just assumes they're getting the right nutrients and your body does know how to make up for things clearly because I'm sure not everyone gets the right stuff but is still functioning and walking around and all that but even if you're not showing any symptoms of any sort of deficiency i feel like your body would just be functioning a lot better and you'd probably have more energy and just feel a lot better if you were focusing on getting everything that you need so every so often i've done this for about four years now because ever since i've been vegan i've been doing it every so often i log in my typical daily food so like what i would eat in a normal day onto an app called chronometer you can get loads of these different apps but one called chronometer tells you all the amounts of um vitamins and minerals that you should be getting and it shows like what the foods that you're eating are providing you so you can really just see what you're low on and what you need to top up on and this doesn't mean you need to supplement it with like a, an actual supplement but, but you could just look on the internet food sources of this nutrient and then it will come up with loads of different fruit foods and you can just make more of an effort to include that in your diet. And I feel like that's one of the things that makes me confident in knowing that I'm doing well and like being healthy and all of that is because I know that I know what sort of foods to eat to get the right amount of vitamins and minerals. So I'd highly recommend doing that. It's not just for vegetarians and vegans. It's like anyone could be deficient in something. And the last section, I only have a couple of things to say for this, but it's about sort of like personal development. Find a self-help book that you're interested in and make an effort to read a number of pages per day. I know that self-help books can seem a bit like weird and like hippie or, and like spiritual but they're actually not. I feel like it's quite easy to apply them to your own life and just like make changes where you want things to be better. The best one that I've read is You Are A Badass by Jen Sincero. I recommend that to everyone and it's got a tiny bit of a story to it because she sort of applies it to her own life but not too much that it's like a storybook. So I'd highly recommend reading that i have read it twice already and i just i just love it the one i'm reading at the moment i think it's called legom or something like that i'm not sure how to pronounce it but it's basically it's a swedish word and the it doesn't have an exact translation but it basically means not too much and not too little so the book is all about bal balancing your life and having the right amount of everything and like creating the right proportions for example like work-life balance and things like that so i'm really enjoying it i haven't read much of it so far but i quite like it and the last one is if there's a skill or something that you've always wanted to do just practice it every single day and and even if you still can't do it in a few months you'll still be like a few months better than you would have been if you hadn't have even tried. So I think I'm gonna try and be able to do the splits because I really wanna be able to do it. I, I've always wanted to be able to do it since I was younger and I never have. So I'm gonna practice that every day and yeah. I just thought it was like a fun thing, it's not very deep. It could be any random thing or it could be to do with your schoolwork, uni work, your job, um, a project that you have going on the side, your hobbies, like anything like that, just getting better at something. So that's all the New Year's resolutions. I hope you guys liked this video. If you did, make sure to give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel down below. Let me know what your New Year's resolutions are because I love knowing things like that. And Happy New Year to everyone. And I will see you guys in my next video.